What's up guys, Jake Sleesman, Blue Collar Outdoors, and today we're going over tripods. What we use hunting, what we use for our tests, and what we ended up finally using for turkey hunts. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so I have two different tripods on the table. As you can see I got, you know, another camera, two monopod versions we have as well. But what we're focused on is what we take a field for tripods i actually have my little camera it's tripod the big boy's on it right now so i'm kind of terrified <laughs> it's this this tripod doesn't have the strength to hold that camera so uh hopefully it don't fall but let's just get right into it the first tripod we owned and uh this is what we got for tests and i was lugging this around deer hunting and turkey hunting because i always carried the camera so i'm i was lugging this around with this head that camera on here and it was about sits around seven or eight pounds uh total weight which sucked and as you can see it's big and bulky but this right here is the manfrotto 190 go this is an outstanding tripod for tests and stable conditions if we're blind hunting or uh, somewhere we're not going to be mobile this is a great option this is a great tripod then the the head on here is their fluid head this is actually the mvh 502 ah you can lock the left and right with this right here then you can lock this down also you have a fluid drag system for moving up and down and this is actually a really smooth platform. I don't have the bracket right now, but the bracket comes in here, camera sets there. And uh, it's got a lot of features and why we love it for pattern tests and stuff like that. Anywhere we're gonna be stationary, it's really a rigid unit. You have the twist lock set up here. So that goes all the way down, really easy. One of these legs is broke from hunting. And it'll actually pop out but you can see how easy oh this is the broke leg that one like locks together it's kind of a nuisance but we beat on her this is kind of a higher dollar tripod and in my opinion it is not very ideal for hunting at all i really hated it and uh a lot of turkey and deer got to live another day because of how this slowed us down hunting so i've been trying to figure out how a better way we can film our hunts especially turkey hunts is driving me nuts being limited in what we could do in the woods i hate blind hunting i will do it if i have to but i would much rather be on them and after them and this was holding us back i mean the, like i said the whole setup it was about i think it was seven pounds 7.1 total unit um also, we would have the remote on here. It's on the other tripod. We'll go over that then. But that's just looking at this real quick. This is still the tripod we use for uh, pattern tests, broadhead tests, any stationary filming. We're going to roll with this because this thing is just a rock-solid unit. I really like it. It's just the weight and mobility is an issue, so we had to get another tripod. I've tried a bunch of them now, and I finally found one I like. Actually, a couple different setups I like for turkey hunting. It's going to be good for deer, too. But So this is the Manfrotto 190 Go. I would recommend this if you guys are going to do, if you're blind hunters and a lot of reviews or something like that, this is a great option. It's expensive. I think I paid $350 several years back, but they last. They have a five-year warranty on them, and... Uh, we beat the crap out of this thing, and she's still kicking strong. She's smooth. The drag hasn't locked up. One thing I would advise to do is to leave your drag as loose as possible when you're not using the item, so that way it doesn't lock, and you it can keep its fluidity. Uh, I just learned that last year, and I started doing it. It makes a big difference, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But that's the Manfrotto 190 Go. This is what I was towing around the woods Especially in Kentucky, oh my god. It, uh, it'll get your cardio right, I tell you. This is a great tripod for filming out of a blind or 
stationary filming, not really a mobile setup, but it has its moments. So let's lay that down here. Now this is what we ended the season filming. This is with the head and tripod on it. I can't remember what the the weight was of just this unit by itself without the camera, so we're just going to get the scale out here. Yeah, that's what I thought. So with the tripod and the head, you're under 2 pounds. It was like 1.6. With the camera, I think we sit at like 2.9. Uh, this is an extremely lightweight option. I mean, there ain't nothing to this. But guys, testing this afield for the last half of turkey season, this has been awesome. I absolutely love this tripod. This is actually the fourth arrow tripod. and You can pop these out as well, and you can get some pretty cool shots. You can get it angled like that, pop it out even further, get it flush. So you could actually have this on the ground, raise twist this out, raise your center column, and get some really cool shots for photography or filming or whatever. But you have that ability to do that. I like this foam handle here, and actually being this light, most of the hunts when I was following Hawk, I was just holding it like this. I would close this in for balance, and then I could just film them and get really cool shots and increase our the quality of what we're filming. Now this fluid head, this is 4th Arrow's fluid head, the lock to go up and down is right here, that's the drag essentially, and then the other is here. Now this setup, you have two different levels here. You want to go by this one, I'm telling you that now, when you're trying to level out. Then, of course, we have the Stealth Zoom Verizoom unit on here, wrapped around. This plugs into the camera, that way you can not have to touch the camera you can just use this to zoom in and out that is a lifesaver <laughs> i can tell you that right now uh, i'm very happy i bought this they're not cheap i think this one was 130 or no can't remember it was either 100 bucks or 130 somewhere in there uh, they do have other options with the the paddle which is what i want to go to next it's a lot better you have more responsive control but it's more money so we went with this see if we liked it it's a really great system. This right here is one of my favorite ways to film now because it's light. We can be mobile. We can be everywhere. We can be quick. It's just pop, just your clasp locking system, which to me, I almost like the twist lock better, but this is not bad. I mean, you can just pop it and it's quick, but it's whatever your preference is. It doesn't really matter either way. I've never had a problem with that getting loose or this. Um, it's just this is better for pattern tests and stationary film, and this is more of a run-and-gun setup. And we would have the camera on here, and I have a quick camo ghillie suit that I had cut so it fits over the camera, and we can drape it over the front. So not only does it cover up the tripod, it helps break up the cameraman's uh, outline and silhouette so he can get away with some movement being able to film for you guys it's hard i'm telling you that right now it's quite tricky filming the turkey birds but this is the system we use now these are the two tripods we have in our arsenal outside of this little amazon one which is actually not doing bad with this camera it's not rated for this camera weight but it's doing okay right now all right, so here are the two models side by side. You can see the size difference. This is the Manfrotto 190 Go with the Manfrotto fluid head. That's the 502 AH. Then we have the fourth arrow complete setup, the fourth arrow lightweight fluid head, and the fourth arrow tripod. This total unit with camera on in tow is sitting under four pounds. This is over four pounds with just this without the camera and this is what we use when we're going to be mobile we need to move we need to adjust quick get on birds etc public land hunting anywhere we don't we know we're going to be doing a lot of running gunning this is what we'll be rolling with this is what we've used in the past and it kind of sucks because of the weight and how bulky it is but it is extremely effective for blinds or any stationary filming as i said 
So really it just depends on your filming style and how you hunt, which these, which of these would be better. This one is more money. Manfrotto is a, a well-known name. It lasts. This thing has been outstanding for us in a lot of different weather conditions, freezing, raining, snowing. I mean, this thing has held up outstanding. But this sucker right here, I think I said, I think I paid 350 several years back for this. This camera and the head, you're looking at about $200. It's a really good setup with the very zoom on there about 300 so this is a great option uh, never really been a fan of fourth arrow I like their Rex arm kit but they're that's about it until I bought this this is outstanding so in turn in my final judgment both of these have a place in our filming like I said this is what we use for tests you cannot beat the stability of this unit yes it's more money Yes, it's heavier, but for what we're doing for pattern tests and stuff like that, this unit is outstanding. When we hunt blinds, oftentimes we'll use this as well. Uh, if we're packing everything in, we roll with this or the monopod stake, which you'll see in another video. And it just depends what you guys want to do for filming, how you film, how you hunt. Both of these are tremendous options. I would recommend both of them. For their, this is more, if I had to buy just one, I might get this one. It's cheaper and it can do all really well. This is kind of limited. I mean, you can hunt with it. We've done it for two, three years. It just, I can tell you firsthand, carrying this thing, public land, covering ground, going up hollers in Kentucky, etc. This is really heavy and it, it kind of sucks. It slows you down, but it is a great unit. But guys, this is the second video in the filming gear series we're going to be doing. Uh, like I said, I put that post out. I was very curious to see how you guys would respond to filming these kind of videos. I know it doesn't fit everyone's interest, but we're just trying to get more people out there filming. And uh, we just don't want you guys spending a ton of money. We, I did myself getting into this and getting started filming. I want you guys to learn from my, what I've learned, my mistakes, etc. So this is a video just going over what I've started with, what I ended up with, and what we will be filming, how we're going to use it. So I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this, mixing them in. I'm not; It's not going to be overwhelming, but I just want to help those who want to film the outdoors and promote God's country. We want to help you guys succeed and start a YouTube channel or just share it with your family and friends, whatever you want to do. We got your back. We want to help you get going. So, but guys, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. Drop your comments below. Let me know which one of these would fit how you hunt. Also, if you do film your hunts or fishing, whatever it is, anything outdoors, drop a comment below. Let us know what you use for your edits, your camera gear, your monopods, your tripods, whatever. Um, as we are learning ourselves, so. As a YouTube community and the outdoor community, we're one big family, and that's how we run this channel. We can all learn from each other. That's what it's all about, guys. Coming together, sharing ideas, everyone benefiting and growing as individuals. That's what we're about here at BCO. If you're new to the channel and this is your first video with us, welcome to Blue Collar Outdoors. This is what we do. We film all things outdoors, pattern tests, broadhead tests, you name it, any kind of tests. We got all our hunts, we got film and gear reviews, we do it all here in a no BS, honest manner. We just want to get you the performance talks, the rest walks kind of video, and that's just what we do. So, this is Jake Sleesman, Blue Collar Outdoors, and this is just a video of the two tripods we've been running, the pros and cons of each, and what we think about both. So, as always guys, we'll catch you on the next one.